In this video, we're going to take a look at the sum of the first n natural numbers. Now, to really understand this video, we need to be familiar with the notation that we're going to be using throughout. So if I start here with the notation, then we use the Greek letter sigma here. Okay, and this represents a summation. And we need a few things for this summation here. Now, let's say I'm taking the summation of r. So we need a starting point here. So r equals 1 in this case, let's just say. And we need a finishing point, the last term. And in this case, I'm just going to take this as n. Okay. Now, what I'm looking at here is the summation of the first n natural numbers. Because if I take my starting point here, r equals 1, that means we start our summation with 1. And what we keep doing here is we just keep going by increasing by 1. So it'd be 1 plus 2. Remember, this is summation, so we add as we go. Plus 3, plus 4, and so on. Okay, and we'd keep going here. So we get to the last term, which would be n. So this is the sum of the first n natural numbers. Okay, so our last term here will be n. Now we have a nice result for this. So the sum of the first n natural numbers. So in this case, we can write this as a half n. So a half n or n over 2, whichever you prefer, times n plus 1. Okay. Now it's important to say here, this result is not given in the form of the book. So you either need to memorize this or know how to derive it. Now for this video, I'm not going to prove this result or show how to derive it. And the reason for that is because it really depends on where you're up to with your A-level maths um, and whether you come across, say, an arithmetic series. So for that reason, I'm going to leave it out of this video, but I will cover that in a separate video. Okay. So that's the result that we need to be familiar with. So that's the sum of the first n natural numbers. Again, same notation here. Now we also need another property here. And let's just say we've got a summation of a constant here. So if I'm taking the summation from r equals 1 to n of a constant here, let's just say 1, and this result will simply be n here. Okay, you notice it'll just be whatever the last term is. So that'll be important, and I'll show why in a moment when we take a look at the next property here of linearity. So I said that was a property. It's not really a property as such, um, but it is an important result, and it will make life a lot easier. You can just remember this here. Okay. So both of these are very important. Like I said, these aren't given in the form of the book, so you just need to be familiar with those um, or understand how to derive them. So what I'm going to look at now is what we call linearity here. So taking a look now at linearity. So what is linearity? Well, linearity is a property that allows us to simplify expressions involving summations. So let's say I've got the summation here from r equals 1 to n of k f of r. Okay, so linearity here essentially allows us to factor this k out. So if k is a constant here, I can take this k out in front and we multiply through by this k instead. So what I'm going to do here is write this as k lots of the summation of f of r, like so. Again, I'll have r equals 1 to n there. Okay, this is a really important property. It allows us to simplify a lot of expressions that are involving summations okay where well, we might have a constant like that in front we also have one more thing here for a um, for linearity so let's say i've got the summation here from r equals 1 to n of say f of r plus g of r then we can also apply linearity here by essentially just splitting up this bracket here so what i can do is write this as two individual summations so i can write this as the summation from r equals 1 to n of f of r plus the summation of g of r from r equals 1 to n there. Okay. And that is the property of linearity there. So these two results here, really, really important. We'll see them a lot more when we take a look at the exam revision of our series and summation but definitely um, endeavor to remember these results and these two here, okay? So that's everything we need to begin with there for the sum of the first n natural numbers. Let's take a look now at a practice question here. So for this question here, what I'm looking at now is the summation of 4r minus 2 from r equals 1 to n. So if you were to think about this here as a summation, then my first term here would be 4 times 1 minus 2. That'd be 4 minus 2 giving me 2. I'd have 2. My next one here would be when r is equal to 2. So 4 times 2 is 8, minus the 2 gives me 6. If I was to do r equals 3, 4 times 3 is 12, minus the 2, I'd get 10, and so on. 
Okay, so we can see where this is going. So what I'm going to do now is use my properties of linearity here because what I've got straight away is this bracket. So we're going to split that bracket up using linearity. And what I can also see here is I've got this four in front of the R here. So again, we're going to use the properties of linearity. Now, before we actually go straight into linearity here, let's just remind ourselves of the result here for the summation of R. So if we do that over here, the summation of R here, so from R equals one to N, and the summation of R, the first N natural numbers essentially here, well, that's going to be equal to a half N or N over two times N plus one. Okay, and we're going to need that result here in a moment. So what I'm going to do now is use linearity here and split this up to start with. I'm going to get the summation from R equals one to N of four R, of four R there. And then we're going to subtract the summation. In this case, this summation will be positive two. I've got the minus on the outside here. So it's going to be minus the summation of two there from again, R equals one to N. Okay. I'm going to use linearity again here because what I want to do now is take this four outside and this two here. Well, what we saw before was the summation. So we do this one here from R equals one to N of one. This was simply N. Okay. So how does this change when we've got a two here? Well, I'm just going to use the properties of linearity again. I could write this as two lots of one and I can take that two out in front. Okay. So what I'm going to get here then is four lots of the summation from R equals one to N of R, which we know the result for here. So that's not a problem. And we're going to get minus two lots of the summation from R equals one to N of one there. Okay. Well, I'm going to get four lots of this result here. So I'm going to get four lots of a half N, half N times N plus one. And then we've got minus two lots of the summation of one here from r equals one to n. So again, we know this result, this will simply be n. I get minus two lots of n. So I get minus two n there. Now, for this question here, this isn't too bad to simplify. But what you'll see in the next video when we're taking a look at the sum of the first, um, you know, the squares and the cubes, simplifying these expressions can be quite tricky. And that's where usually people will trip up. So Good algebra skills here will help massively. So let's just have a look now at simplifying this here. So I've got four times a half n. So that's gonna be four over two. So in, it, in other words, I'm gonna get two n there. So I'm gonna get two n times n plus one minus two n. Okay, so let's expand this bracket here. I'm gonna get two n times n, so that's two n squared. We get two n squared there. I'm then gonna do two n times one, so that would give me positive two n. Get positive two n. And then finally, I've got this minus 2n at the very end. So minus 2n there. And clearly, when I collect like terms here and just simplify the 2n here and this minus 2n, they'll just cancel. And I'm just going to get left with 2n squared as the question asked for. Okay, we just have to show that this summation here is equal to 2n squared, which is exactly what we've done there. Okay, now that was quite a straightforward example. It wasn't massively challenging, but it was just exploring these key ideas of linearity here, like we can see. Splitting it up to begin with, so we split that up as the summation of 4r, and then the, um, minus the summation of 2 here, and then I've applied linearity again to factor out the 4 and the 2 there. Okay, and like you see, once you start doing that, it makes the result much easier to work with. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our solution to that practice question there. And that brings us to the end of this video on the sum of the first n natural numbers. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the sum of the first um, square of the natural numbers and the cube of the first n natural numbers.